So with IPv4, we will typically use DHCP to assign addresses. It's either that or manual address assignment, and DHCP is way easier. Now with IPv6, we've got a couple of other options. So we have the static assignment or the manual assignment, which is the same thing we have in v4. We also have the option to do stateless address auto configuration and we'll do router advertisements from routers. And so there are a few different components in play when it comes to doing DHCP for IPv6. Now, it depends on the way you want to do this as to how you configure your DHCP server. So, option number one is stateless address auto configuration, where the router will send out a router advertisement that includes its IP address, the... Um, network prefix and the clients will make up their own um, interface ID and they will pair that with a network prefix to create their full IPv4 address and they'll use the neighbor discovery protocol to make sure that there's no conflicts. They will use the router's address that it got from the router advertisement and that router advertisement will basically can basically include all the information except for the DN, uh, DNS server. So for that, what we do is we use, it's called stateless DHCPv6. So we'll go to our IPv6 configuration, but we won't actually create a scope. What we'll do is we'll go to server options, and under your server options, we will set the DNS recursive name server IPv6 address. And here we'll set the address for that DNS server. And you'll see there's a few other options here. But this is the one that we'll usually use with stateless address auto configuration. And we have to configure our router then to do that, um, to send that O flag in the router advertisement. So if we're doing stateless DHCPv6, this is all we need to set up. Now the other option is to use stateful DHCPv6. And in stateful DHCPv6, what we do is we set the router advertisement to the O flag or the M flag rather than the O flag for a fully managed configuration. And then we will create a DHCPv6 v6 scope the way we would normally do an IPv4 scope. So it's new scope, and we'd click on next, we'd give it the name probably going to complain here for a minute because or in a minute because I don't have IPv6 activated on this thing yet. We'd set the prefix and we'd set the starting address, the ending address, any excluded addresses. Let's go colon colon 10 through colon colon 200. Just give us a few there to play with. Doop, 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 doop. Let me do this correctly because I've already set my colon colons. There we go. That'll work better. And then we would set our uh, lease duration. So the lifetime is uh, the term for it here in IPv6. And then we would activate the scope. Now, notice it didn't ask us any options. When we did IPv6, we had the option, no pun intended, to add in our scope options. But here it doesn't give us those. It creates the scope, and it actually let me do it even without an assigned DHCPv6 address. Um, so let me go ahead and do it. It gives me my scope options here, and so I can come and configure my options. But I want you to notice something. Notice we have far fewer options here, and one of them that we do not have is the default gateway or the router. So that's always something we have to put in in IPv4, but in IPv6, even when we're doing a fully managed configuration, where we'd set the DNS server and manage IP addresses and hand them out rather than having uh, the clients generate their own interface ID. Rather than doing, or even when we do that fully managed configuration, we still don't set the default gateway. And that's because the default gateway is given to the client computers using a, I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I don't need it, using a... Um, router advertisement. So that's something that we will never ever include. Now, personally for me, I don't see a lot of benefit to doing a fully managed configuration. 
for me, it's easier. It takes less uh, management, less load on your DHCP server if you do stateless DHCP v6. So remember, that's where we set the router to advertising. This router advertisement is to include the O flag, which says go to your DHCP server for other information. And then we just put the DNS server in our server options rather than in our scope options. And when we get an IPv6 DHCP request for other information, the DHCP server just hands in the DNS server address. To me, that is an easier configuration to manage and it bypasses the need for the server to lease and track and maintain the IPv6 address leases.